pants today that were live hey what's up um first thing i want to do is remind everyone to wear their safety glasses uh these people keep asking about so i'm going to just go ahead and tell these are by bobster uh, bobster makes glasses that are really for motorcycling and wearing when you're in the wind you know but what i like about them is they protect my face, they come all the way to my cheek, and they keep junk out of my eye. And ever since I've been wearing these, I have not had any eye injuries. So I'm just gonna promote them. They don't sponsor me yet, but I really like the glasses and I want you to get good gear. So Bobster glasses. Uh, what I wanna make today is I've been thinking about a barong. A barong is a knife from the Philippines. It's associated with the Moro tribes. And I always thought they were cool. I always liked them. They have some really beautifully carved handles most of the time. Generally, the blades are pretty simple. Um, I just did mine a little different. So, of course, I put a little bit of a kick up here because I want a top edge. Uh, I'm not going to forge the fuller end of this one so much. I'm just going to try to take this piece of steel. This is 3 uh, eighths inch ADCRV2. It's about an inch and a half wide. And I'll be forging this blade. I'm gonna try. I may not nail it, I may fail. It happens, but I'm not afraid to be here live and do this. Um, so that's what we'll be making. And maybe I'll address a question or two while this is getting heated up. So I'm gonna start heating it up. I'll use the power hammer, the hand hammer, the press. I use all the tools at my advantage. Um, can I just use this? Of course, I can, but why would I? Why would I when I have all the gear? So use the tools, make it more fun. It's more fun for me that way. Uh, let's see, what I got in my pocket is, what's it got in its pockets? Bone, we'll move that somewhere else. And someone had asked why I don't make the Atlantean sword from the Conan movie. Now, as far as movie swords go, it is one of, aesthetically, one of my favorites. I think it's one of the coolest looking swords. Uh, the original, I don't know exactly if it was designed by Jody Sampson, but Jody Sampson made those swords for the movies and um, they look really cool. If you look at that sword closely, you'll notice there's a handle, a big bronze pommel, a big bronze guard, and some other bronze pieces that come up on the way. So that sword is like, it's more than half of it is handle. It's still cool, but technically, this is a sword that looks best hanging on the wall. Um, functionally, I think if I made this piece, it would probably end up weighing six or eight pounds. I think Albion Swords makes a, a version of it, which I want, it's cool. Uh, but it's not a sword that I'm really interested in making because of the fact that it is mostly handle and it just looks good. I like making ancient swords. My, my favorites are 2,000 years and older. Um, so I make, I've made Greek swords and, and Roman era swords and things like that. And I like those swords and even older stuff. I've, uh, it's an Assyrian sword, it's kind of crazy. There's an image of it I have that I, I tried to get it off of the website from this museum in Germany, but it was encrypted so you couldn't do it. So I had to take a screenshot of it. But it's a cool piece. So I'll be making that kind of sword when I make swords. I won't be making the Atlantean sword, even though I think it's cool, I think it's a neat piece. Yes, it's a challenging piece, but mostly it's a challenging piece to make for the person doing the bronze casting. So it's kind of one of those things, it's like, it's neat, I like it, but I'm not gonna make it. So just to, just to share the information, I'm just sharing that. Uh, let's see if I can find my hammer. Big hammer. There's a lily hammer. And as usual, the hammer I really want to use, okay, it's over here. I was about to start complaining about it. So I'll be using these two hammers some. Um, Somebody from the Fencer's Forge said, thank you for your opinion on my Ulus. On your what? U-L-U-S. Ulus, yeah, he showed me some Ulus. That's kind of cool. Um, so. <clears throat> a lot of a lot of folks make all kind of neat stuff. Um, Ulu is, I think, traditionally a, 
a native knife of Alaska and the Northwest. And so there's a lot of versions of it. And uh, he showed me one. I thought it was neat. You know, it's like, you're, there. hey, what do you think of my knife? So I just give the honest opinion about it. I'm not going to sit there and critique, well, it's not finished enough or it's not shiny enough. If you're making something and it works and it's cool and your customer base likes it, keep making you know, keep making it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I like the rusticness of a lot of the knives that people make in their shop with grinders and, you know, stuff like that. I think it's great. I, I think that um, you just keep doing it. You move forward. Um, Someone said, why don't you use other steels like 8670 or 01? Um, I don't use 01. I did use 01 when I didn't know any better. Um, 8670 I have used a lot it's kind of it's kind of like L6 I'll go back L6 is one of my first and favorite steels that I used to use uh, we, I could get it from carpenter and round bars I don't know if I've ever really seen it flat 8670 is a variation of this steel I don't know who makes it I've used that 80 CRV2 is like the most improved version of kind of the same concept it has about 0.70% carbon and then about 0.20 or maybe a little bit less vanadium. So with this steel that I like, it's my favorite now, I get a very forgeable steel, responds well to forging. Uh, I'm not saying it's easy to forge, it just is, it, it forges well. And that means it doesn't move like butter, but it, it works when I want to forge something. I don't use 01. O1 is made by many different steel companies throughout the world. So it could be made in China or Russia or the UK or here. The standard, kind of the gold standard for O1 is made by Starrett. And the Starrett O1 usually has vanadium in it. It's a great steel. It does not respond well to forging. And I just quit using it years and years ago because I found better alternatives. I found steels that I like better. So the argument could be made, well, this steel holds an edge better than this steel, or that steel holds a better than that. That's all a bunch of garbage if you don't know how to heat treat, and if you don't know how to adjust the edge geometry and the heat treat for the knife that you're making. So because one knife is made out of a certain steel, doesn't make it better unless it has the proper edge geometry and the proper hardness. So I always tell people, get a steel that you like, Whatever it is, if you want to use that, use that one, but make it consistent. So you can't buy O1 from three different places and have any consistency, because you won't. You have to get it from one source, use the same one over and over and over again. I've made hundreds of knives out of O1. It's a fine steel. Um, it's tricky to forge because it will red short, it will crack and crumble on you, uh, but you have to be careful. If you learn how to forge it, you can forge it well. Is it better? No, it's not better than anything else. It's only better if you understand how to use it. Uh, I'm getting some round, some big round stock of 52100 in. I like this steel. I'm going to be using it because I want to do more integrals with integral guards and integral pommels on different knives. Uh, it's a tricky steel to forge sometimes. It's a hard steel to move, but you learn it and you use it. I'm looking for big pieces of steel. I wish it was all the old school W2, but it's not. Uh, if I could get the 80 CRV2 in one inch by one inch squares, I would. I just don't know where to get it. That was a long answer. I'll be using these flat jaw tongs. I'll be using the big ones. So I'm going to get into this, and uh, you can get another question ready when I take a pause and I'll answer. So point, this will be a shorter point, and then the preform setup on this is going to be interesting. So we'll see how it goes.
Vincent. Um, love your work. How about a shout out to the England rugby team playing Scotland? All right, the England rugby team playing Scotland. I don't want to start a war, but I know that there's always been a war between England and Scotland, and I'm not for either one of you. I'm for Ireland. So anyway, <laughs> cheers, fellas. I hope you win. <laughs> All in good fun, right? I'm using a 1930s Petty House. It didn't have to be a 1930s. You can actually get these right now from Kane and Sons. So you can buy a brand new one. I think Petty House is the only anvil company that still forges anvils. All right. Smooth this point out a bit. Use my flat side. some of the material because it's kind of a leaf bladed, a leaf shaped blade. So I'm going to move it. I'm going to set it up so I have wide, the widest point will be here, which will be like almost three inches wide. That actually cuts maybe better than a Kubri uh, when I make the versions I make. Uh, my friend Sam Lurkwin, he makes a really cool one. Our, our styles are very similar, but that's because we're tight buddies, we're good friends. Me, Adam DeRose, or Sam Lurkwin. Um, we're all similar because we're kind of from the same school of thought. Um, I was the first guy in that school, and uh, Adam is my brother, and Sam is my other brother from you know different places in the world. So we have some similar concepts and knives. Everybody is very unique in their own style. You see things that go, oh, that looks kind of like that, that looks kind of like that. Well, connect the dots and you'll connect the people and say, oh, these people might know each other. These people might work together. Usually the case. I'm going to turn up a little bit because this is a thicker piece of steel, so I'm going to give myself a little bit more heat. All right. Move this thing around. If it's bigger than my pattern, then that's cool. see where we're going. It's thick enough. I should be able to pull it out that wide. <laughs> I hope so. I could have chose the wrong size piece of steel. It has happened before. Any questions out there? Ooh, Ireland's playing Wales right now. Hope Ireland wins. Hope they kick the dragon's ass. Rugby. My favorite rugby team is probably the All Blacks, New Zealand. I don't watch ball sports a whole lot. I don't really watch TV. So I think it's always funny when people say, hey, <laughs> did you see this episode of, what's that show on History Channel? <laughs> no, I didn't see that. <laughs> I saw it live once, because, but I don't watch TV, so I don't really do that now. I did watch something cool. I do like cartoons. Oh, there's this. You guys seen that Prime? It's called Primal. It's on um, 
Adult Swim Cartoon Network. It's really cool. It's like the storytelling is like uh, George Miller, you know, like the Fury Road. So there's no talking. It's just action. Like, you know, the, the character is like basically a Cro-Magnon, you know, kind of like me. And uh, he's like, you know, it's like he's running over here and he's running over there and he's got this pet Tyrannosaurus Rex kind of and they're pals. It's such a, it's a cool, visually, it's awesome animation. I'm just saying you might want to watch it. It's super, super cool. I like watching stuff like that. That's entertaining to me. Um, all right, now, now, all right, now, now, really this time, for real. I'm going to start seeing if I can get a little width on this thing. keep adjusting until we get what we want man I got a ways to go but I still got a lot of material there so every knife is different setting up the preform is probably the trickiest thing um, that's why I like to have a pattern so the pattern helps you can see I forged to this pattern before it's all burnt um, Technique called blueprinting, you know, so I'll draw the knife out. I might draw a little and enlarge it, and then I'll make a pattern, and then I'll forge it a pattern. I drew this knife many, many times before I decided to make it. I've made other versions of it. This is the one that currently I like the best. Oh. All right. <laughs> Someone said they're going to forge a Knight's Templar sword next any suggestions on the materials? Steel. Yeah, make it out of steel. If you're going to forge it, I, here's the other thing. Whatever a Knight's Templar sword is, I don't know. There's a fellow named Uric Oakshot, and he wrote this brilliant, he, he assessed ancient swords all the way back into the Viking era. He numbered them, he categorized them. There's called an Oakshot type whatever. I highly recommend you go and look at his work. It's easy, look it up online. There's another fellow who's done a lot of research. His name's Peter Johnson. Peter Johnson is probably one of the current best sword makers on the earth, and as far as research goes and study of the swords go. So if you wanna make a sword like a Knights Templar, whatever that might be, that is, Knights Templar is an organization of people from the ancient past. Whatever type of swords they had, I don't know. What that would look like, I don't really know. But what I'm recommending is do your research. If you want to make something cool, do some research because it's not called a Knight's Templar sword. It's a type. It's a type. It's identified as a certain type. So go and look that up and go, oh, that looks cool, and make that sword. Um, if you can make Damascus, make it out of Damascus. If you can't, get a piece of steel and make it out of that. So good question, but when you when you say something like a knight's templar sword that really means nothing and i'm not being rude i'm just saying that doesn't mean anything that's that's a an organization from history that i don't really know anything about but i know that there are identified types of swords and if you really want to replicate one you'll do some research and find out the width the length the weight all those are important if you make a sword and that sword weighs six pounds it will be really, really big or really, really crappy. So swords aren't very heavy. Uh, they're basically, you know, a sword is designed for cleaving flesh and bone. That's it. If it doesn't do that, it's not doing its job. So if you make it too heavy or it's too heavy to pick up, then it's not a real sword. It's just a wall hanger or a basher or a banger or something like that, but not really a real sword. Very difficult to make swords. Um, very difficult to make them right. Just this too. All that scale will come back up and hit you. 
right in the face by. See how I'm holding my hammer like this? I'm not doing this or this, I'm doing this. I've, it's way easier to, I don't get worn out using the hammer. All right, keep working towards this piece. Now I'm just trying to get the set up. Boom, so the widest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my raised clip in there because I like the way it looks. And it gives me a place to put the top edge. I'll make that one sharp probably, I don't know. I don't often do that little sticker for $3 and it's a guy doing a fist bump. Cool, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So, can you get started for under 500 bucks? Yes, you can. You don't need anything more than an anvil. My first anvil was a piece of railroad track. It's not the best anvil, but I can tell you a better way to mount it. Instead of using it with a rail like this, Get about a 200 piece of track, like a 200 pound piece, four or five feet long, and bury the end of it in the ground. Boom, 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 and have it about that high. So all that track is in the ground. You're using the end of it. Clean and polish the end of it. You can't forge more than one inch at a time, so you don't really need all that face. And you can use that piece. Now, I'm not telling you to go steal railroad track, okay? There's plenty of it laying around that's that's discarded or junk. You can ask somebody, they may even give you a piece of it. Use the end of the track, does that make sense? If the rail runs this way, mount it in the ground like that and use that end piece. It's gonna be way more beneficial. Uh, you can use charcoal for fuel. You can use hardwood charcoal. Uh, it's very easy to build a gas forge. Uh, you can buy an Atlas gas forge for really cheap. They're really good little forges. Uh, just look it up, Atlas. Forge Atlas Anvil. Um, here's an Atlas Anvil. This is less than 300 bucks right here. I think I demonstrated one last week. I'll have this mounted soon, but this anvil weighs uh, 75 pounds. It's a little bit set up. It's one sharp edge, one radius edge raised back here. You don't need a horn. Uh, most bladesmiths don't have a clue what the horn's for anyway, and neither will you, okay? So <laughs> this is perfect for forging blades on. Less than 300 bucks. So you can get an Atlas Forge and an Anvil for probably less than 500 bucks if you want to buy it. But there's a lot of good tutorials on YouTube on how to build a forge, how to build a forge. So I hope that answers the question. Sit. What did I just do? Oh my goodness. Here's what the horn is for. Watch. I'm bending. I'm bending. That's what the horn is for. If I want to work stuff, I'm going to work it here under the mass. I'm going to move it. I don't do any drawing out here. There's nothing that supports the horn. Uh, no one told me this, I just thought about it. Uh, if an anvil has nothing to support underneath it, then it's not really intended for heavy moving steel. Um, I move steel on the edges of the anvil with half on, half off face blows. Maybe we get a piece of one inch square in there and I can show you real quick if I can find one. I'll look and see if I can find one. <sighs> well, maybe I have a one inch round. Looks like somebody, all right, this is uh, 7 eighths, um, 1085 from Hitachi. So I'm gonna put this in the uh, forge and heat it up and I'll show you where to move steel. Uh, drawing steel up for me, I mean, you do whatever you want to, but I don't do it on the horn because there's nothing to support the horn. So I don't use it for that. I use the horn for bending. I do some shaping back here in the back horn. It's a two horn anvil. Um, I don't do a lot of forging on either because there's no support here. The body is where the material gets moved. So I'll show you how to do a point on that too whenever that heats up. Move that a little closer. All right, stretch this out some more, a little bit.
all back up. This takes a while because I'm talking. Okay, fall studio class, everybody's asking. The fall schedule will be released uh, the end of June. So by the end of June, I'll know when our new classes, we'll post them up uh, end of June. So that'll be all the fall. So um, basically September, October, November, December, boom, we'll have that. What? Oh, if you come here, you can come and take a class with me. Uh, the, the, the one I recommend the most, especially if you don't know how to do anything or if you know how to do very little, or even if you are a seasoned bladesmith, everyone learns something new, including myself. Um, I do the Brute de Forge Chopper. So the reason I use the, that concept is I want everyone to be able to come in here, see how to make a 10, 11 inch knife that's great for a camp knife or chopping trees. It, it's a handle design, blade design, edge geometry and all these things, but mostly we're forging it to done. You don't need to know how to swing a hammer. All you need to know how to do is hold these big set of chopsticks in your left hand. Or if you're right, or if you're left-handed, you gotta hold them in your right hand. You know, right-handed, you hold them in your left hand. It's super simple. And you can do these and I'll help you. If you can drive a car, you can use a gas pedal, then you can use this hammer. And uh, it's very fun. And I make sure you leave with a knife. And we always have a great time. Ask anybody who's taken our class. Since we've been here, I think we've had about 75 people go through our school. So we're having fun with it. I want people to come here and enjoy the process. Uh, you meet new folks from all over the world. I literally have people come from uh, Taiwan, Alaska, um, Croatia, Florida, all kind of places like that. So come take a class we have a blast it's three days you will make a knife I have some advanced classes those are for people who know how to grind at least you don't have to know how to forge that good but if you have to know how to grind I need to really see your work we do a Damascus kitchen knife I'm working on doing an integral Damascus kitchen knife class that's gonna be longer than three days some of the classes get complicated so instead of three days they're four days but a, a three-day class means um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all day long Saturday. That means if you're trying to leave on Saturday sometime, you're missing out. I'm not going to cater to you trying to get out of here early because there's other people in the class. So don't do that if you do sign up for a class. Hope that answers some questions. All right, I'm going to get back to working on this thing. I need some tongs. Na, 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 na. I was about to do the Jurassic Park song, theme song. Maybe hot enough this. I'll show you real quick. Let me get my little bit heavy. I don't have my, I don't have my, um, so normally I will silicone this stand to the ground. Now the end will silicone it, silicone to the base, but it might hop around a little bit, but this is a uh, high carbon steel. This is 1085 from Hitachi. So I'm going to make a point. Now, I'm not drawing it out on the horn. I'm drawing out right here on the edge.
pointy. I did it here. I didn't do it here. It's, I'm sure it's possible on the horn, but does it make sense to me? If it does to you, show me. Uh, bet you can't do it faster here than I can do it here, though. So, if somebody has a technique that I like better or it's more efficient, I will use the technique. Uh, that's a technique I learned from Brian and Ed Brazil. Uh, probably more specifically Brian. Um, but it's a good technique. It's a direct forging method. There's not any fooling around or dinking around. It's just straight to the point. And that was corny. Bending. Right, I'm gonna get a little hotter and bend this more. Kind of like making a kukri, but straight. This is my coffee or your coffee? Uh, yours. I don't know if this is a boring video or not. <laughs> People like it. Hey, here's one thing. Um, everybody is sick right now. I'm going to tell you why. There's a menace and a blessing to our culture, and it's in the form of people from the ages of about one to probably 14. They don't wash their hands. <laughs> so if I go anywhere and there's little kids, hand sanitizer, man. It's totally, little kids totally freak me out, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, they got their fingers in their nose, they're in the dirt, they're in the trash. It's like, I, I had little kids, two of them. They're big now, but same thing. So hand sanitizer, I don't even know why I said that. What's cool is it's flammable too, that's what's cool. Huh? So if you, if you want to see exactly how to do this I'm showing you how I forge blades, how I heat treat the blades in detail, how I shape a handle in detail. So if you really, really want, you've got a lot of questions and I appreciate those questions, but I want you to get that series. That series is, is gonna help you with everything. Whether you're new or you've been doing this for a hundred years, like a lot of people claim, like me, hundreds of years, no. Get the forge series, it's gonna help you and it's gonna help me, so don't forget it. What does that say? More information about the barong. Uh, the barong is from the Philippines. It's attributed to the Moro tribe. It's a big leafed, leaf shaped blade. Usually the pommel and handle are carved to be like a um, stylized bird. It's a cool looking knife. Uh, didn't pay tons of attention to it early on until I kind of designed my own version of it, which is what I'm working on now. And that's what I can tell you about it. You could uh, do a Google search like Dave Baker and probably get a lot of information on there. <laughs> All right. So this is a preformed bend I have in here like I do a kukri. But I got a bend in a weird spot. I'm not not pleased with the way that looked. Okay, I think I got it, all right. Okay, now I'm gonna get back deeper into it. Get my tongs. The knife I'm carrying today is the Scott McGee Piranha. Um, this is 
the handiest little everyday carry knife that I have had for, I've had it for years now. He gave it to me and I really appreciate it. It's got a cool, this is a great way to carry a knife. Bam, it's right here. Cut food, open a package, whatever I need. Great for that. It's a good little knife. All right, so I'm gonna turn it this way. We'll grab it in here, grab that. Get into this part. Basically, I mean, really, it's straightened out kukri for the most part. <coughs> Another handy tool. So uh, these little metabo grinders. So out of all the little handheld grinders, all the little small grinders, I think these Metabos are the best. Um, I have a, a big, uh, this is worn down, but I put a big cup stone on and I get them from Super Grit. Man, you can clean up something, you can grind a blade, you can do all kind of really nice stuff with a grinder this size and one of these wheels on it. So that's a, that's a handy tool that doesn't cost a lot of money to get into. I was thinking about we should do a, a video, a live feed on um, doing st stainless clad with a carbon core. I'm um, not doing that today, but I'm thinking we will do that. All right, get into this shimmer. looking pretty good about where I want to edge thickness. I'm going to grind this one pretty much clean. So I guess you could say a barong is a straightened out kukri of sorts. This is a lot of waiting around for stuff to get hot when you're forging a blade. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to this anvil a bit. Show you what I like about this one. This anvil has this nice little area right here between the horn and the body where when I'm working on a curved blade, it just, I like that spot. That spot's just kind of like the sweet spot for moving steel around. So I'm just gonna tune this thing up a little bit with this hammer. This is a three and a half pound rounding hammer. So I'm gonna be, you might want me to move, huh? I'll just move this over here. How's that? Move this one out of the way. All right. Okay. Like right here. Cause I got a little hump and I really want to just smooth everything out on that. Nice, okay. Now I can move, now I can move over here. All right. I'm looking for flat when I'm doing this. Okay. 
Getting closer. Any more questions? All right. We can answer some questions. Good ones, good questions will be answered. Uh, there's a lot of great hammer makers out there. I don't make my own hammers. Um, Lily Hammer is a great one. You can go look at his website. It's, I think it's L-I-L-I-E Hammer. Um, Liam Hoffman makes hammer. Ethan Hardy makes hammers. Um, there's a lot of great information out there. Beasler, oh man, Paul Beasler makes hammers. We got a couple of Beaslers in here. Where's my Beasler hammers? Right, oh, they're over here. So Beasler is probably one of the better hammer makers right now. This is Paul Beasler. Uh, if you'd like to see how hammers made, go check out P Beasler's Instagram, Paul Beasler, Beasler Blacksmith. Um, he, I think he has a YouTube channel, but these are made by him and he's great. Um, I don't, I've made hammers, but I don't make hammers, so to, I'm going to direct those questions to an expert, Paul. Check out Paul Beezer's Instagram, check out his uh, YouTube, I think he has one. I bet there's a link on his Instagram to get to his YouTube. So he made those and he's great. He's a nice guy too. Very, very positive. So straighten that out a little bit. All right. Something here I don't like, so I'm going to fix it. Oh, yeah. Better. Give it a squeeze. I'm about ready to forge in the raised clip part. I'll forge that in just a little bit. I might need to make it a little more straight before I do that. I gotta get a little more, cause it's gonna curve away from the way I forge it. So, I'm trying to think. Question? Make tongs or buy tongs? Buy tongs. You can make all this stuff if you want. I just don't. I am not interested in making hammers or making tongs. I can make hammers and tongs, uh, and if you want to, I think you should. It's a great way to get going as a bladesmith, as a blacksmith. Uh, it'll develop hammer control and it'll let your mind start working in different areas that you normally don't. I'm a bladesmith, so I'm mostly forging blades. I have made tomahawks and axes and tongs and birds and fish and all kinds of things forging and I have fun doing that, but that's not my forte. So I buy tongs from whoever has them. So Blacksmith's Depot has them. Um, that's Kane & Sons. I usually buy every kind of, I'll go in there and I'll spend a thousand bucks on tongs. I come back here and they disappear. So I don't know where they go, but I'm buying tongs all the time. Uh, I don't, it just don't interest me that, you know, the answer. I have no interest in making tongs. You have to have a beer. You have to not have a beard to blacksmith. It does make it easier, I think, but if you can't grow a beard, that's okay. My daughter is really good at this. She doesn't have any facial hair. She doesn't have a beard. I probably get in trouble for saying that. Will I get in trouble for saying that? Probably. All right. Sometimes I gotta look at this thing, because I wanna... Okay, I think we're ready for the next part. This is where I can ruin it, and I might. Ben Tombs, you got your woman to forge for the first time. Cool. All right, I want to give a shout out to all the lady smiths, all the, all the women um, of any age that are out there forging. 
You're doing blacksmithing, you're welding, you're making knives. I just really appreciate you all. It's a big part of this community and it's a very important part of the maker culture. And I really want everyone who, who knows a, a girl out there that's going at it, um, just support your local blacksmith, bladesmith, welder, fabricator, especially if they're the girls. Give the girls uh, a shout out and some recognition out there. They deserve it. They're better than us at this every time I've seen it. So give them, give them a hand, give them a shout out. Okay, now I'm gonna go to tongs. Tongs, tongs, tongs. No, I don't like making tongs. Tong some things are just not interesting to me to make. <clears throat> Necessary, yes. I don't wanna do it. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. That's the, that's the this part. Did, did everybody understand that forging with uh, you know forging the point on a half on half off face blow that is that means I'm pinching that big piece of steel here on the corner of the anvil I'm not doing I'm not trying to hit over here or over here I'm, I'm pinching it right here most of it is on the anvil but I'm pinching in between here and here I hope I explained that well I did it the goodest that I could, <laughs> the bestest. All right, so this, I'm gonna keep playing with a little bit here. Gonna screw up, I hope. Boom, that's what I want. Okay, all right. Could be a kukri still, I could just bend it over and make a kukri, but I won't. I'm gonna make a barong. All right. Thank you to Island Metal Forge for the $5 donation. Island? Island Metal Forge. Oh, Island Metal Forge, thank you. Where? Are you? Where is Island Metal Forge? Uh, he said, hey Jesse, Jason, love the production quality. I've been jealous. Wish I could stay. Look forward to your next live stream. Well, cool, man. Thank you, Island Metal Forge. So one of the things I like to know, Island Metal Forge, I want to know what your name is. So while we're still on here, tell me your name and I can tell everybody else what your name is. Yamez, Y-A-M-E-Z. Yamez, Yamez, Yamez. Thank you. I appreciate it. We hope to keep making videos. I want everybody to improve in their skills and have fun doing it. And I have fun doing it as long as you do. Um, this is, you know, I'm doing this. I have the guts to come out here and do a live thing. You know, I'm, I'm, I do screw up contrary to popular belief, but I'm not afraid to do it. I'm not afraid to get out here. So, you know, the, like I always say to people sitting on the sidelines, sitting in the bleachers going, oh, you should have do this or you should have do that. I don't need to say hi to you. I'm gonna say hi to the people who appreciate what we're doing and like what we're doing, and that's important. Don't likes don't matter, only likes. Okay.
would Andrew Wozniak do? He'd keep forging it until it was perfect. Let me see how close I am to this. Mm, we'll make that edge come up a little bit more. It's a little too droopy here, so we'll do a little bit more uh, edge forging to bring it up. Bring it up more pointy. I think I'll use these tongs. I will go to the hammer and make it smooth. This one, I will probably grind a fuller in um, and make it all clean, I think. I think so. That's my plan. Get set up over here. All right. Oh, yeah. You want me to ask that? So there's a lot of questions. Um, if you want me to be sure to get to your questions while we're live, use the super chat feature, and I'll be sure that I get on there and answer your question. And if I don't get it now, I'll do it in a later video. Okay, going back to the big hammer. I need to bring that clip back a little more. I need a little more razor back on it, if that makes some sense. I'll pull it back a little further. I think I can do it. Hope I don't screw up. Does that make sense? Did I say that right? Yep. All right. Oh. It's getting warm in here. You can never have a big enough air compressor. That must be a good one. Who? So I want to give a shout out to Johnny Wise, action hero. <laughs> JD Wise from my home hometown. Uh, we rolled a lot of tires together. And uh, I want to pray for the boys in blue. And I really miss you, man. I wish you'd come visit sometime. All right. Back over here. He kept saying that he finally did become an action hero. For me, I like where that raised clip is to be at the widest point of the blade, which is about right here. So I moved it back just a little bit more. Now we're gonna have to bring that edge down some more. It's very leafy looking. I'm gonna bring that belly up. And that gives me my back edge. I'm still very thick there through the center. Um, nice, you know, if you, if you look at old barongs, they're usually 3 8 Some of them are even thicker at the, um, right where the blade starts, and then they taper out, and I want to do the same thing here. So the widest part is where the apex, you know, the, the clip is raised up here. I'll take some of that off. So when you're forging, you get extra material. By no means am I always going to be able to forge it perfectly into the profile. I can get close, and I grind it a little bit. And that's something somebody was asking me about, like when you do it, when I do a handle, um, and, I, and I hope in this live feed we may have time to do the handle. I don't know if we will or not, but I'll show you. Basically make it like a big axe head. If you think about this, just isolate that shape. It kind of looks like an axe. 
So I just make it, I flare it out and make it like an ax. If you really want to see it in detail, you got to watch the Ford series. You can play it back and forward all the time. That's why I shouldn't probably show them how to make this whole thing. This is like a whole, it's like free. <laughs> all right. I'll work that edge a little bit more. I'm going to use the flat side with my lily hammer here. This thing hits so hard. I'm kind of just grabbing it back here like this. Close. This is a little bigger than the one that I drew, but that's all right. I think, man, I'm gonna bring that up just a little bit more and then we'll work on the handle some. Hopefully this makes sense. Some little subtle things that you probably won't be able to see in this video and that's fine. Um, you have to experience it for yourself. Telling me, or you want me to ask? Oh, okay, cool. Show you this. Oh. I can I can pet this cat's belly more than three times without getting scratched. One, two, three. That's enough. All right. Tungsten. The cat's name is Tungsten. Tungsten Wolfram, it's the same thing. I didn't name it, I'm not clever enough to come up with names like that. All right, now. Straight, all right. Let's put it over here in a vise for a minute. Make sure we're really straight. It's right on the money. It's a great way to get the edge over. Back here, the edge is thicker. It's just the nature of the knife, the style of the knife. So now that's straight. Oof. And now I'm gonna chop it off and do the handle. All right. <coughs> we got a 10, ten pound donation. From ten Preston pounds. Steel. Jolly good, Preston. Thank you. Love your work. <laughs> what you do is I appreciate all your videos and information you put out that help me as I'm growing my business. Cool. Well, thanks, Preston. That's cool. Um, I like that. Um, I've never experienced that before, honestly. This is the first time I think we had that feature, but it's really cool. It really inspires me. It helps us cover what we're doing in here. So I just want you to know that when we do the super chat, whatever you send in, that's very generous. That's cool. I'm not going to go buy pints with it. I'm gonna pay for these cameras and our crew, and that way we can keep doing it. We can keep doing this over and over again. And hopefully one day, we'll have our mythological podcast will become reality. So eventually we'll have this podcast that we've been, um, it's, it's so far it's just in the fantasy realm now, but it will come to light sooner, probably sooner than later, I hope. So thank you, Preston. Very generous and very kind. Um, I'm gonna cut this off probably important to show you how much of this I need to cut off. So I'm gonna go find a ruler uh, amongst all the other mess in a real shop. In a real shop. Man, there's a video of a fellow. He's an old Sheffield, England cutler. And I guess this fellow was in his 80s. 
And if you look it up on YouTube, I don't know what it's called, but this man made pocket knife blades. And on a good day, he would say he could make about 300 blades. And if you watch him forge, every movement is perfectly efficient. Boom, 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 boom. He's forging every little facet, every detail, even the nail clip, and it's perfect. And compared to him, I'm a nothing. I'm an amateur, I'm a rank amateur compared to that guy. And if you look his video up, just ancient, it's like Sheffield Cutler, 80 year old Sheffield Cutler. And this is probably 10 years old now, but if you look that video up, you'll see some amazing forging. Um, I like to give credit where it's due. So those guys could forge, these guys were making that stuff. So this is a big knife. Our blade is 12 inches. Um, based on the steel thickness and width, I'm gonna go with about four inches. Chop it off right there if possible. So put this aside. Man, that smells nice burning, it must be pine. And I'll go over here to the chop saw, which may be a no-no in a lot of places. Some dastardly fellow has my chunk of W-2 over here as some kind of tool or toy. And some other garbage, some other piece of junk. Not quite straight, but it's good enough. Um, smell rubber burning, that must be me. I want to give myself enough handle material here. I didn't bring tongs. Put the hot steel under there. Really? That's crazy. Why? Well, that I didn't even know that was a thing that you could do. That's pretty wild. Don't buy French wine. All right, Austin. <laughs> buy it from New Jersey, right? <laughs> well, good. Is that Austin, Austin? Masket. Who? Sandy Masket. You're inspiring to me to get started. Maybe call it Old Lady Forge. Where is your shop? Where you hold classes? Uh, we're in East Tennessee, and I can only tell you once you pay a deposit to take the class. I hate to say it like that, but it's kind of a secret spot. And it is known to the people who have taken the class. And if you take a class, you'll know exactly where it is. Uh, but we're in East Tennessee. Uh, we have an airport very close. It's very easy to get here. Um, but thank you so much, Sandy, Ben, ben and Austin. Oh yeah, there is a link on the website for in-studio classes. If you go to my link, uh, you'll you'll see that link to it. I'm not uh, savvy with the computer, so that's why my wife and my crew here, they are. The cat's better on the computer than I am. So we got the blade in here. I've got some tongs. These are tongs that are for grabbing wide blades. I think this is a. Uh, says inch and three quarter by two, or no, quarter by two, so two inches wide, quarter inch thick. And these are great for holding that. So we will get that hot first. We will widen it out. Imagine doing a fishtail. If you're doing blacksmithing, this is called fishtail. Uh, you can do it a couple ways. I'm gonna use the power hammer because it's faster and because we have a limited time to film for our live feeds, we'll do it that way, all right? People is it freaking out that you cut the blade with your saw? Why? I, don't. I cut it with my saw, yeah. 
just that you break all the rules. Yeah, there are no rules. That's one of the most important things to learn. If you're not going to be a rogue bladesmith or blacksmith, you're going to be stuck in the past. You're going to be stuck in ancient history. The best way to do this is whatever way is possible. So yeah, I cut it with the saw. Um, I've been to modern blacksmithing shops and they have really high tech tools, plasma cutters, iron work. You can stick that into an iron work and it would just chop it right off. I don't have one. Uh, they are $40,000, I think. But um, <clears throat> use whatever you have available. You could hot cut it. But what's the benefit to that? If you know the reason why it would be better to hot cut it, fine, do so. I used to carve wood. I used to do a lot of wood carving uh, and wood sculpture, and I really enjoyed it. And there were one faction, there was a faction of wood carvers that were very much only traditional. And there was another faction like myself that's like, I don't know, so I'm just gonna do it this way. So the faster the tool worked, the, you know, the better it was for me. I'm forging, I'm bladesmithing, I'm making knives, I'm doing blacksmith work, I'm fabricating stuff. So I'm gonna use chop saws, plasma cutters. If there was a real lightsaber, I'd probably quit doing this um, and I'd become a Sith Lord. But there's not, so I can't do any of those things. So in the meantime, I'll just keep forging blades. All right, I think we're hot enough. I'm gonna start moving, hopefully, in the right direction. All right, I'm gonna flare this thing out some. See, I'm turning it like this. A lot of older knives, ethnic type knives, like a barong, you don't find these knives being made as full tang knives because it's not very efficient use of the steel. So if you only have so much steel, generally the knives would be hidden tangs. Um, it's, it is as strong if it's made properly. And I've not, I've had old kukris and old barongs. I've never had them come apart and I've used them. So I don't think it's a problem. But for my purposes, I like doing the full tang. I like the way it looks. Uh, I like the way it feels. And uh, that's, that's the way we're doing it. So, all right. I'll be using the horn again for bending. See where we want to get this handle to go. All right. I'm going to put that part in now. Why didn't I do the other part first? Because I'm not great at measuring. I can get close, but I want to make sure I have enough steel to do the thing I want to do. So that's why I did that. Wow, I'm just amazed by the generosity of you all out there. Bobby Norton, what's up? Bobby Norton wants to buy us a beer. Thank you, Bobby Norton, you're the man. I appreciate that very much. Thanks for watching. Uh, I think that's cool and kind and generous of you. I'm sure we will all need a beer when we're done with this. So thank you, Bobby. Okay. Spin that a little bit more. And I'm gonna do it like this. Oh no, oh man, we're gonna have to fix that obviously. But how, how does it fix it, precious? So I kinda got myself into a little bit of a predicament here cause I overforged the thing. So I'm gonna find another thing to, hey, this is good. So you ever watch, if you watch Recoil TV, 
me and my friend Neil Kamimura made a tomahawk out of this military axle from some kind of military vehicle. And that was kind of fun. But I'm gonna use it right now as a kind of a prop to bend a thing if it can be done the way I want to do it. So I'm gonna to try to do this. And if, I, and if I screw up, I'll be laughing with you. But we'll see how it goes. Put that in there. Da -na 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 -da. Okay, got what I want, widen it back out, move that steel up forward. So I'm gonna take all that thicker stuff right here, it's right here, and I'm gonna pull it forward a little bit and widen it back out. All right. Why doesn't your anvil have a drop off by the horn? It looks like one smooth top. That's a great question. The question is, why doesn't my hand, why doesn't my anvil look like a uh, London pattern? <laughs> because they're not from London. So London pattern is your traditional looking Acme anvil. If you watch the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner show, Every time the Wiley Coyote calls up and orders an anvil to drop on the coyote that ends up dropping on him, it's a London pattern. So it's got the little step, boom, boom, traditional anvil, London pattern. This is a petting house, and it's a double horned anvil, and it has not much drop in it. This is not a petting house. This is a Sutterver's Half Black. I don't know how to say it. It's in German. This is a Southern German pattern. And it also is a double horned smooth top anvil, and that's why you don't see that little step in it. I've had a lot of London patterns. I think they're fine. It's not my favorite type to use because they don't have, I like the way that these are double horned because I can use this surface for a detail, for doing some little detail in forging. So that's why I really like these. Huh? Oh, what? Oh, and now this is really all you need for Oh my gosh, I'm tired of picking this thing up. For bladesmithing, this is a perfect little anvil. I'll talk about it again. Um, this part's radius, this part's radius. I'm gonna buff, I'm gonna clean this up and do a little bit of work on it just to make it a little bit smoother and sharper. I have it mounted, there is a hardy hole in it. Hardy holes are for tooling. Um, Pitrel holes are for different types of tooling or maybe punching, you can use it for a couple things. But I'll have this cleaned up soon, I'll be demonstrating this. This is a great anvil because it's easily affordable. Um, if you can buy bottled water, you can buy one of these. It doesn't cost the same, it's just relative. The price is relative. Bottles of water are expensive, but this anvil's not. That may not make any sense. It does to me, so. Man, I'm getting a workout. Look. <laughs> All right, now I gotta do the hard part. The hard part. Ciao. All right. I want to pull the steel a little bit towards me. So I'm going to kind of That's right. Hit it right in the middle. go and scales hitting me in the face and that is incredibly painful <sighs> keep your anvil clean otherwise the scale is going to hit you in the face another good thing um, I'm going to show you a good thing gloves are for oh gloves are great gloves are great for cleaning your anvil off this glove was donated by uh, Bob Randall I use it for welding I'm not mailing them back to you, Bob. You want them, you gotta come get them. All right, 
Do a little bit of work under the an uh, hammer over here now. We're getting really close, closer than we were before, so, all right. So I'm taking that area and I'm making it width to make this little piece to make a somewhat of a finger guard right here. You can see what I did when I crushed it down. And that's gonna work out nice. All right. The handle's gonna be oversized. It's gonna be bigger than this one. And that way I can go back, cause this handle works. This is a great handle, grabs me back. I'm gonna cut with this thing. This little piece keeps it from kicking out of my hand. Um, it's kind of more extreme on these. It has to do with the style of it, but also functionally it works real well. So if you have that little kick up, when you're chopping, it won't ratchet out of your hand like that. Will Peterson donated $5 and said, every time I watch one of your videos, I learn something new. Thanks for sharing, saving my pennies for the fourth series. All right, thanks Will, I appreciate that man. Um, the whole purpose for me doing this too, I am not interested in, um, I don't want to be, I don't want people to see me. I don't want people, I want to make knives. I want to enjoy this as my craft, but I want to share it with you. And the only way I can do it is through basically our own television channel, which is here on YouTube or over on Instagram or over on Facebook and trying to direct you to places so that you can be a maker. Um, I was explaining a little bit about that whole thing. It used to be be a maker, not a taker. I just cut that part off because I thought it was more important to say be a maker. Uh, there's a lot of great things you can take, like you can take great photographs, um, you can take someone out to dinner. That's my example, but be that. <laughs> you can take an online course, <laughs> but be a maker. I want to inspire you to make. I want to inspire you to make. So it's be a maker and you can wear, we changed our, you know, people were getting the t-shirts for a while. I just don't know where to get them now. We're working on it, huh? Coming soon. Okay, coming soon. All right, so anybody, there's a the question was out there, so I'm just trying to answer it. All right. So, going to go over here. Very curvy, not necessarily what I want, so we're gonna fix that. What's your favorite bourbon? Favorite bourbon? I'm uh, probably stuck on Blanton's. That may be my favorite. It's the one with the little horse on top. Um, I think all around, I like that one the best. It's real kind of butterscotchy, you know? I like that one a lot. Oh yeah, but it's it's like a peanut butter, but it's it's too sugary for me. It's, yeah, it's too sugary. But Blanton's I like. Blanton's is my favorite right now. I like Basil Hayden too, but I say my all-time favorite would probably be the Blanton's. Yeah. I'm just thinking about a funny counting thing, but if one of my aunts is watching, I can't say what it is. <laughs> so I'm straightening the handle out, see? This is where we want, and I'm kind of far away from it, so <laughs> I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna fix it. Tongs, hammer. I'll be using the horn to bend. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. I think that's about where we want to be right there. Getting close. So the thickest part of the knife is right here in this junction. You can see where we have a very definitive plunge where our edge starts. And this is the foundation area. That's, that's the thickest part of our knife right there. So I forged this little area in. You can see my grind for my bevels will be right here. Top clip will be right here. It's a little, you know, it's not exactly like this. So I'm gonna grind it some. And I've got extra material because um, it's got J, I'm gonna just say Jay from Nashville. Jay, former helicopter pilot, he knows who he is. He was asking me about this, so I just wanted to share. I don't try and forge all that in. You can, there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually cool to do. But for me, I just want to get it the size, a little oversized, and then I have what I want. So this is slightly oversized. I'm gonna come back a little bit more. And then I have enough material to do exactly what I want. Guides, not rules. Man, it's kind of warm in here. Can I, cut, can I open one of the doors? It's your Is it going to matter if I do? I mean, sound and all that. So we're really close. So once you're done forging, then there is a long series of thermal cycling, normalizing, which is all preheat treat, heat treating, hardening, tempering, straightening, on and on and on and on and on. We won't be covering that here, but I know where you can watch it. That's what I want. Okay. All right. Let's see the pattern. Something I don't like right here. That fits right on the money. One little thing I'm gonna fix and then we'll be we'll be done with the forging part and really appreciate you all watching and being here with me. You are making this possible. So for today, all of you who super chatted, your kind and generous donation, that makes this possible. Uh, I feel like I was a kid watching PBS, you know, like Roy Underhill had the Woodwright shop. And that was one of the things that he's making all this cool stuff out of wood. He's traveling to other people's shops. He had his own blacksmith shop. And I think Roy Underhill is still making stuff out in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'd love to go do a class with him. But he would be, you know, brought to you by viewers like you. And that might sound corny, but it's true because you're great and you support this channel. And I really appreciate it. And I hope we can keep doing this on and on and on until I have a gray beard. Oh, I have a gray beard, okay. <laughs> Takes a long time to dye your beard like this. It's trendy, it would be black, but I dye it, so I thought, you know, it was like, seemed like the thing to do. Another thing about this ADCRV2, if you watched me forge it, it responds well to planishing. That means when it's all dark and I'm hammering on it, I'm not gonna crack it, it won't crack. I'm not, it's not grain refining or edge packing, or the ounce is trying to make the surface smooth. Just want to make the surface smooth. So I got to get a spot hot on here. I just want to knock this dent out. And um, hopefully I can do that without ruining the whole thing. So maybe I will do it right here on this anvil. And that's the spot I don't like right there. Ah, oh, yeah.
go like that. All right. That showed me another thing that I have to do. <laughs> So I want to give a shout out to Andrew Wozniak, Colony Knife Works, right? He calls it Colony Knife Works, but his name is Andrew Wozniak. He is a great bladesmith. Um, I'm not going to call him a noob because he spends every day, all day long and night forging blades. He does some incredible integrals. So check out Andrew's Instagram. It's called Colony Knife Company. So go over there and like Andrew, follow Andrew, share his work. It's really cool support your local blacksmith. So he's my shout out for today. A friend and I want to support his work. Also Mr. Mears, Andrew Mears, he's made this crazy cool dagger sword. It's like a, it's a swagger. It's like a sword dagger. It's got gold and tigers and all kind of cool stuff. Check his, his work out too. Very neat inspirational work. So I'm just going to do this and take the round side. Sometimes this is trickier than it looks. Still working on that bump that I don't like. Oh, I think it's gone. All right, gone. All right. So now I'll just get it all straight. Basically a barong is a straightened out kukri, pretty much. <laughs> I think I got it right. Did I got it right? I think so. Let's see. Pattern. Can the Blade cover the pattern. Yes, it can. It's like Bob the Builder. Can we build it? Yes, we can. All right, so this was a one and a half inch wide. Not sure exactly how long, but we didn't use all the length. Uh, by three eighths inch thick. And we forged a 12 inch barong out of it. This will be a really handy chopper, camp knife, all purpose uh, outdoor user. You can dig a hole with that thing. You can chop trees down. But why would you when you could get a shovel? I'm just saying. So, any more questions? I shave it off every morning and usually I get up about six and I'll shave it off instantly and by about 9.30 it's back. So I can't do anything about it. I was at Blade Show and I shaved my face so the only time you'll ever have seen me was Blade Show last year. And if you did see me, you might have not recognized me because my face just looks like it's chiseled out of flint. Look like an action hero, sharp, it does. I mean, I don't look like, I shave my face, I don't look like a baby. <laughs> like a Superman chin, but not a butt chin. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was trying to do away with the beard for a while, but I just have to accept it and move on with my life. It's there, it won't go anywhere. It's, I shave it off, it shows right back up, so. That's the way it, that's the way it bees. So this is a straightening hack. This is a trick, a technique. Uh, some bladesmiths will say, no, don't do that. I learned it from another bladesmith named Jim Rodabaugh. He showed me how to do this back in like 
2001. Um, using the vise, the leg vise, to straighten blades, and then I'll go back now and I'll put the edge in. I'll make sure the edge is centered. If it's not, I'll tune it a little bit. Um, and then we're pretty much done with the forging part. Don't feel bad if your forging is not perfect to the pattern. Like I said, I forged this a little oversized because the pattern is right on the money. The pattern was, I spent a lot of hours designing that knife, making that knife, refining that knife, using that knife, and it works. So that's the pattern I'm going to go to. I'm forging my blade. I'll hit it somewhere. Maybe it's, maybe I hit it too hard. It's a little thinner. But when I grind a profile, I'll come back. I'll have a perfect profile. Everything will be right where I want it to be. So I don't want you to feel like, gosh, I have to forge it dead on, you know, dead perfectly on. Well, you don't. Get it as close as possible. Get better and better at it. But don't, don't be constipated about this. You can, you can do this and do it really well. And um, so now I'm straightening. Wow, it's straight. Okay, well, no need to do anything else. It's straight. Just to check that, just to double check that, to make sure I'm, I really believe it. Uh, it's straight, okay. Hey, maybe I know how to forge. Maybe I'm getting better at this. So that means, straight means the body of mass. That means, you know, the, this is a little over a quarter inch now, probably five sixteenths with a nice taper in it. Right around in here is maybe quarter inch. And the edge is about the thickness of a nickel or a dime. So when the edge is centered in the mass, it's straight. When the back edge is centered in the mass, it's straight. When I put it in the vise and you're looking it down it, like you'd look down, a, um, like if you got a 22 and you're looking down that and you see the little front bead and the fork in the back and it looks straight, then it's straight. So these tongs kind of stink for holding stuff. Oh man, I don't know, Travis. That will be a subject for me and Travis Bailey to talk about on our podcast. <laughs> reptilians, do they hold the secrets of bladesmithing? I don't know. What do you mean, reptilians? Like, Anoles? Oh, lizard people. Oh gosh, I mean, Nancy Pelosi. What do you, I'm just saying. That's it, that's the barong. Um, it's not all wrong, it's just barong. <laughs> so I really think I want to straighten it. I keep fooling with this. No, I got what I want. Eh, eh. I think I got to straighten that handle out some more, actually. Okay, I'm not done yet. Handle's too curved, too much curve in the handle. Travis Bailey. I think they live underground in Elizabethton, but I can't know that for sure. No one's ever lived to tell the tale. <laughs> it would be funny to, to find out, wouldn't it? Does anyone ever live to tell the tale? We would never know. You notice I talk trash about certain politicians, but I won't say anything about the <laughs> you'll die, that's why. <laughs> I'm making jokes. I'm not into politics. I don't care. It doesn't, it's just some other ball game that I can't play. I'm not interested in it. I'm a bladesmith. Favorite Star Wars character? Uh, well, you know, the Baby Yoda is Star Wars now. Um, so I will have to go with the new Mandalorian, it's very interesting. You know, we had all these questions about the Mandalorians and Boba Fett and all that stuff. It turns out Boba Fett was not even a real Mandalorian. He's just wearing Mandalorian armor, but the Mandalorians have this code and they go, this is the way, that's cool. It's kind of corny, but it's really cool. But my old school favorite Star Wars character has got to be Han Solo and that crappy pile of junk, the Millennium Falcon. I like that too. That's my favorite ship, my favorite character. Uh, I don't know why I saw it when it came out in the theater, so I've always liked that. He shot that dude under the table. Cool. <laughs> I thought that was great. So, all right. 
I don't need these. I do need these. Probably when I squeezed that thing in there, I made that handle way too drop, too much drop in it. So I'm gonna get some more of the drop out. Ooh, ooh, I just wanna cool it off here just for a second. So if you put stuff on the anvil long enough, it'll just kind of cool it off. So I don't wanna bend that part anymore. I want that cooler, but I do wanna bend this part back here. So I'm gonna do that and hit it there. All right, that's better. Yeah, that's, that is more of what I wanted right there. Good. Favorite new movie version Star Wars character is the um, Kylo Ren, I like him. Darth Vader. All right, that's, I think I got it now. I really think I got it. So that's the knife. This knife is bigger than this knife, which is cool. So this one, I don't know, is a 10 and a half. This one here is more like, if we line them up and I just put them right on top of each other, um, let's see what happens. Oh, I gotta get the right tongs. So this blade that I made is longer by at least an inch, but that works. That's gonna be good. And I'm not gonna, re it won't be recurved, it'll just kinda come maybe subtly, and then we'll come out and make that barong shape. So that will be cool, I believe it will be cool. Edge is centered, everything's where I want it to be. That's our barong. We got the back edge too, forging the, the back edge. All right, that's it. Can I do any worse? Can I do any better? I'm gonna call that. We have time for a couple more questions. Next part of the process really is um, heat treating. We'll begin heat treating with normalizing. Uh, that's our you know preheat treat, hardening, tempering straightening if we need to, all that stuff. So if we got any more questions, I'm happy to answer some. Matt Cohen's, Matt Cohen's five year old is watching. He won't let his dad turn it off. Hey, Matt Cohen's, what's up, Bubba? I don't know where he's from, but I hope that you can play with clay. You can get a piece of clay and a little hammer and you can forge That's with that. Oh, that Matt and his son. Oh, okay, I knew that. I just keep calling him Mr. Cohen. <laughs> Matt Cohen's five-year-old. Okay, Matt, well, get your five-year-old a piece of clay and a wooden block and give him a little hammer and he'll be entertained for hours by forging that clay. Clay moves the same as steel. Did I say that 10 times already? No, I said it 11. All right, say it two more times. 13's a lucky number. Any other questions? I think you can do a sign-off. All right, so uh, if you really want to get rid of your belly, send $19.95 to my PayPal and I'll show you how to do it. Like that. Y'all have a great day. Bye.